Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to another Hobby Hour tutorial. Today let's paint this old Blood Angels Space Marine in a classic heavy metal style. This style is really defined by bright colors, extreme edge highlighting, and sharp, dark shadows. It's all about being as precise as possible to achieve the cleanest looking results. But there's one really important thing to painting in this style that doesn't get enough attention. I'd be spoiling things if I told you now, so I'll just give you a hint. It's not edge highlights. It will be easier to paint all the parts separately, so after cleaning the mold lines off of the model, I drilled some small holes and glued some wires to hold the parts. Then I stuck them onto some corks for easier handling. I started out with a gray primer. This is a household gray primer available from Ace Hardware, but any similar color primer would work just fine. In most cases, I would use an airbrush to base coat the model, but I'd like to show that you can get a great result without one. I'm using some thinned Evil Sun Scarlet and a large craft brush. A smooth, solid finish will require a few coats. I ended up doing about five. Just let it dry completely between layers. Here's the model after the first coat dried. It looks pretty splotchy, but some more coats will fix it. The key to a smooth result is making sure the paint is thin enough and don't put too much on. After getting a solid base coat, it's time to paint some soft shading on the armor. I thinned down some Mephiston Red and glazed the lower half of the armor panels. Since this is a glaze, that means we want the paint to stay exactly where we put it. Too much paint will have a tendency to run, so make sure you have very little paint on your brush and it will leave a thin, transparent layer. Repeat the glazing process a few times to build up the Mephiston Red. I think it's important at this stage to talk about some fine art terminology, and that is edges. I'm not talking about the physical edges sculpted on the model, but edges in terms of brush strokes. Brush strokes create edges with value and color, and they can be hard or soft. In simple terms, a hard edge isn't blended at all, and a softer edge is smoother and more blended, and some brush strokes are in between. The red shading we're doing here would be considered very soft. The edge highlights that the heavy metal style is known for are very hard. Hard edges are outlines. They draw the eye and command attention, while the eye tends to pass over softer edges. Soft edges are just as important though, because that is how we give volume and shape to the model. Next I thinned down some Evil Sun Scarlet and used the same glazing technique on the top portions of the armor panels and also wherever the Mephiston red areas needed to look smoother. You can go back and forth between the two colors if you like. You might find that helpful to create a blended effect. It doesn't look like a lot now, but once the edge highlights are on, this soft shading will have a lot of impact. The armor panels need some definition, so I mixed up a dark red using some black and corn red. I thinned it down with water and painted it directly into the cracks between the armor panels. This is another case where I think it's better to have less paint on the brush, that way it's more likely to stay where you put it and not run everywhere. Now that all the armor shadows are done, we'll step away from there and work on the other areas, starting with some black under the right shoulder pad. Since it doesn't have any sculpted detail, I wanted to at least paint some definition in there. Then I painted black over all the leather and armor joints. I avoided any areas that are going to be silver or yellow, but I did paint a black line around them.
With the black dry, I base coated all the leather areas with some Rhinox hide. Next I moved on to the silver areas and base coated them with iron hand steel. Then I used some Rune Lord brass and painted the bolter shells. After the metal areas were dry, I shaded them with a mix of equal parts Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. I find this color really useful, and I mixed up a large pot of it. There's enough brown in the mix to give the black shade some color, but not look rusty. Next I base coated all the yellow areas with Averlin Sunset. Thin the paint down a little bit to ensure a smooth finish and apply two or three coats. Make sure to leave the black line showing around the yellow areas. It will help define them later. With the yellow base coated, I painted a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet on the gun icon. When that was dry, I thinned down some Mephiston Red and used it as a wash to shade the icon. Then I took some thinned black and carefully outlined the shape. Now it's at the same stage as the rest of the armor, and we can leave it for now. Next I shaded the yellow with some thinned Troll Slayer Orange. I applied a little bit more paint than I would for a glaze, so I guess the consistency would be between a glaze and a wash. I want it to flow into the cracks a little bit, but not run too much. Then I thinned down some Wild Rider Red for a final shade on the yellow. Use this one sparingly and apply only to the deepest recesses. Next I used some Flash Gits Yellow for some soft highlights and edge highlights. I thinned the paint slightly for the edge highlights, and I thinned it down even more into a glaze-like consistency for the softer gradation highlights on the gun. I used some Dorn Yellow for the final highlights on the edges and corners. Next I painted the gem and eyes, beginning with a coat of black. The gem will end up getting covered by the gun, but I decided to paint it anyway. Then I painted a layer of thinned Caliban green, concentrating more of the paint near the bottom of the gem and the front of the eyes. Next I used some thin Warpstone Glow, 
once again concentrating the paint near the bottom of the gem and the front of the eyes. A little extra paint spilled over on the side of the eye here, so I cleaned off the brush and soaked up the excess. Warpstone Glow is pretty transparent, so I applied a second coat to strengthen the color. Next I thinned down some Moot Green, and I applied it a little more sparingly. Remember that the brush deposits more paint where it last touches the model. So by ending the stroke at the bottom of the gem, it's leaving more paint there and making a blended effect. For the last highlight, I used some Dorn Yellow. Use this one sparingly. A little bit goes a long way. Finally, I added a few dots with white. Now on to highlight the black. I started off with some Dawn Stone thin with water. With very little paint on the brush, I painted the edges of the backpack details. Since barely any paint is going on the model, it ends up being semi-transparent, and it dries pretty quickly. So I went back right away and made a second pass a little closer to the edge. This brightened up the highlight, and I was basically able to get two shades from one paint. I did the same technique on the black armor joints too. Next I took some Fenrisian Grey and highlighted the very corners. Now for highlighting all the leather. I used some Dune Bowl Brown in two stages. First I highlighted all the edges. Then I thinned down the paint into a glaze and added a soft highlight blending towards the edges. Then I used some Scrag Brown for the next highlight. Next I used some Tau Light Ochre, concentrating on the corners and the very edges. Finally I mixed in a little white for the last highlight, and I used it to accent the very corners. I thinned down some Iron Hand Steel and painted a soft highlight on the silver areas. Then I carefully painted some Stormhost Silver on all the edges. Now that everything else is done, we can move on to the real fun part, highlighting the armor. Begin by going back with Evil Sun Scarlet and apply an edge highlight all over. It won't really show up on the top sections, but it will show up on the bottom sections where the Mephiston Red is.
Also, keep an eye out for any spills or mistakes on the armor, especially with the dark red panel lining color. This is the time to correct them. Next I took some Wild Rider Red and continued the edge highlights all over. Make this line more narrow than the previous. I also like to make a glaze and paint a soft highlight on the top sections of some areas. For the next highlight I thinned down some Fire Dragon Bright. Gently drag the brush on your palette while twisting it, and it will help form your brush into a point. Now for the last highlight on the armor. I'm using a mix of equal parts Dorn Yellow and Fire Dragon Bright. Some painters like to do dots for the last highlight, kind of like this. I prefer a more tapered highlight, so I like to drag out the edges a bit. It's really a stylistic choice, so pick the way you like more. Whatever method you choose, make sure to use this highlight sparingly. Keep it on the topmost edges, because a little bit goes a long way. With all the painting done, I glued the parts together with super glue. Then I painted the top of the base with wood glue and dipped it into fine sand. After the glue dried, I gave the base a coat of goblin green, followed by a dry brush of flash gets yellow. I applied a decal on the left shoulder and then highlighted the edges with the armor colors from earlier. I painted the right shoulder design using Averlin Sunset, followed by some soft shading with Troll Slayer Orange. Then I highlighted the edges with Flash Gets Yellow, followed by Dorn Yellow. And here's the finished Blood Angel Marine in all his 90s glory. Thank you so much for watching and making it this far. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a thing or two. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to do the YouTube things and click the like button, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And also please feel free to drop a comment below if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. Well that's it for this one. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy painting.